pretty heavy. So I, I get the winch handle out and crank it all the way up. It's all done from the cockpit. But when I leave the boat, I don't leave it in this clamp cleat. Again, to make sure that the rudder isn't going to drop by itself, I take it over here and secure it around this cleat. This is the quick release cleat for the rudder so that if it strikes an obstacle, it can kick up by itself. It's a clam type cleat and there's a hole drilled through the bottom of it here that's something less than the diameter of the line so that if the rudder does strike an obstacle and this line pulls very hard, it'll draw it down into the cleat and then out through the hole that's been drilled so that it'll re release itself to prevent damaging the rudder. And the same arrangement applies to the centerboard. The centerboard haul down, releases in the same manner. So that little projection on the side of the rudder down there is a step so that swimmers can get their toes on something in order to elevate themselves up sufficient to then climb up the swim steps. So before going swimming, put the rudder down so you can climb out. That whole thing uh, is so big relative to the rest of the boat, but uh, what I was trying to get is I, I don't want to have control. I want the self-steering device to have control. There's just nothing like being able to kick back and relax. Joanna can keep an eye on where we're going. And, of course, uh, the dog can occupy my seat in the cockpit. And I can play around with the video camera while this little power-sipping autopilot is guiding us along. The tiller pilot, shown here, has a, a hole in the end of its ram which into which one drops the pin on the end of this little crane that's fastened to the tiller. <clears throat> the cockpit wasn't wide enough to run this tiller pilot uh, in the existing width and so I had to set it back in there a bit and, uh, you know, overset it on the, on the rudder uh, over there a bit. There's the custom machine tiller head fitting, the tiller itself, and the crane that clamps to the tiller, and the pin in the end of the crane which engages the ram on the self-steering device. And the tiller pilot lives in its own recess set into the cockpit seat front. It can be brought out and connected to the tiller very easily and it's hardwired into the boat's electrical system so as to avoid the usual problems with the cockpit plug-in for tiller pilots. There she is in operation. It gives the, the, the cruising sailor an opportunity to almost completely escape the tyranny aspect of helmsmanship. Now that thing has guided us many a gentle mile when you don't have to be there on the helm, but we also know that it'll control the boat with a tight course downwind at surfing speeds in the mid-teens while using very little electricity. Let's run around the cockpit and briefly review the controls. Over there on the starboard side, we have the primary headsail winch with its quick release cleat, the outboard motor uphaul, the, uh, the main sheet winch, and uh, over on the port side, we have the outboard rudder uphaul and downhaul, and the other primary winch. Then the secondary winches for boom vangs and spinnaker sheets. And uh, the roller furling line comes into the cockpit, of course. The mast winches are accessible from the cockpit with the dodger down. And here are the centerboard uphaul and downhaul down here on the cockpit sole. There are the instruments with compasses on both sides. And um, the engine controls. 
and then the engine starting switch is in this cockpit bin and the other switches for uh, electrical controls the primary switch for uh, isolating the battery plus the mast light switches are accessible by just reaching in from the cockpit and then uh, even the running backstay levers while seldom used are accessible without leaving the cockpit well, there's no doubt that Scrimshaw has enough strings and knobs and levers to satisfy a discerning sailor. And it's a whole lot of fun to learn to sail a thing, especially by yourself. Yet, she was not expressly designed as a single-hander. She was intended for family cruising. But even then, there are many occasions when one wants to be able to manage the vessel alone so that he doesn't have to get somebody up out of a dry bunk to help him. And of course you can have the cockpit wide open to reiterate. You can also have it well shaded and well screened and you can have the fortress. Let's talk for a minute about one more feature of this Dodger and Awning combination. Reverse ventilation. With the Dodger in the up position and the side flaps down, even the slightest breeze will create a vacuum in the cockpit which draws air in through the stern castle window. Yeah, it's great to listen to old Joni singing in Spanish and <laughs> sit here in the stern castle with a nice breeze in your face that's coming through the stern castle window and headed for the cockpit. Cooking vapors get sucked out immediately. The same thing is true if the foredeck hatch into the head is open. Even a light breeze in the anchorage will draw a nice draft through the forward cabin and into the vacuum in the cockpit and on out. If it gets to be too breezy, too much wind coming through here, starting to blow the fire out on the stove and so on, you can take out the prop. It's just a piece of bent aluminum. Drop it on the deck outside and let the window down. Now you've got a real throttle on it. You can let it down to various degrees if you want to, but you've got a real throttle on this, the amount of air that's coming in through the stern castle. And if it gets to be really too much, you can reach out here and grab this flap. This is how the flap or baffle looks from outside on the stern deck. And uh, now you've got some more throttling on the wind here. This is the condition in which you leave the boat when she's on a mooring and you're expecting, you know, weather. Close this thing by just uh, pulling it to and putting the wing nuts on these three wing nuts across the bottom here. That's the way to leave, that's the way to really close the boat up, you know. And this third castle window is strong enough to take uh, green water from a stern. And while we're down here, let's have a look through the interiors. This view is taken from outside looking in through the stern castle window and on through the cockpit and into the forward cabin. And this view is taken from up forward in the head looking aft through the dressing room and uh, through the cockpit and back out through the stern castle window. The forward sleeping cabin, there's the dressing room in its usual state of controlled squalor. Way up in the bow, there's a sail bin and storage hold for the garden sprayer shower. And a shower curtain to cover that hold. But let's start here at the real business end. Yes, indeed, Scrimshaw does have a bucket head for all the right reasons, in my view. Primarily, it's just very difficult to plug it up. In this case, it's easy to empty out through the forward hatch without going on deck. 